For almost as long as we've been using processing, we've been using methods to group our code. The two methods we've been using are setup, which happens once at the beginning of the code when it runs, and draw, um, which happens over and over again, 60 times a second for as long as the program is running. Um, so when I, um, any code inside happens when those methods are called. Um, just to stay organized, here in comments, take a moment and add in um, how often and when setup happens and how often and when the draw method happens. So this is all to say that there are, um, you are not limited to setup and draw as methods. You could, in fact, create your own methods. Um, if you have a bunch of code that needs to happen um, uh, frequently over and over again, or if, you're, if it needs to repeat, um, it's handy to use a method so you don't have to write the same bunch of code over and over again. Um, there are also a couple of other um, methods built into processing. Um, to illustrate them, I'm going to point out, um, to begin, um, a, a difference of why, um, what some shortcomings of some of our conditional statements are um, in order to, um, to demonstrate why we need these methods. So if I wanted to make a program that allows um, a counter to count up one time every single time we click the mouse, um, I might start by making an integer variable, I'll call it n for number. I'll start it at zero like a good programmer. So this is a number to count up. Um, then here in draw, first I better display that number. So text and just the um, uh, variable name there and that will display the, the value that it holds. I'll put it right in the middle of the screen. And then I'll make a little conditional statement. If mouse press is true, then um, count up one time, n equals n plus one. Um, it'll take just a moment for the text to load because we haven't loaded a font file. Okay, there we go. So now, the problem is though, I just pressed once. Um, you can't see, but maybe you can hear. Um, because draw happens 60 times a second, um, at, and um, this conditional is returning true every time the mouse is true 60 times a second, I would need for this to work, if for it only to count up once, I would need to be able to click exactly 1 60th of a second would be the length of my click. And I can't, I'm too slow. You probably are faster than me, um, but I seem to be like getting like five or six numbers counting up um, each time I press. I'm um, so this is not a reliable way to meet that need or meet the need any time of having something happen just once when the mouse is pressed. Um, so, and, and that's okay. This is not, uh, the, this conditional is not designed for that. This is to con designed to have something happen for as long as the mouse is pressed while your program is running. So let's look at a solution. The solution is um, using another method. Um, the method somewhat confusingly is also called mouse pressed. Um, but it's not a variable, it's a group of code, just like setup and draw are. Please make sure you um, put this after you close the curly bracket in draw. So this is after this entire method is over, just the same way you have to close setup before you start draw. Um, for right now, um, yeah, we're just, all of our methods start with void. So this one is called mouse press, which starts to turn pink until I put those open, close, um, empty parentheses afterwards, and then it turns that um, bold blue, like set up and draw, um, and it knows it's a method. So this method happens, anything inside here happens just one time every time the mouse is pressed. So I'm going to add it to my list and go ahead and add when mouse press happens and how often. So instead of using a conditional statement, I can just say with that same equation in here, n equals n plus 1, and it will happen just once each time the mouse is pressed. So just one time each time the mouse is pressed. Um, another way I could illustrate this, I guess let's make um, an ellipse and I'll locate it at n comma, I don't know, 100, make it kind of tiny. So that's 
n is the x location, the location on the um, x-axis. So instead of moving continually as long as the mouse is held down, which we've done before, now it's just going to move one pixel every time that mouse is pressed. Um, so this can be very handy to, if you need to have something happen just one time every time the mouse is pressed. If there is a um, method called mouse, mouse pressed, I wonder if you've guessed there's also one called void key pressed. Oops. Um, can you guess when the key press method happens and how often? It is, in fact, just one time every time a key is pressed, any key. Um, so it's very similar to mouse press in that a conditional statement using if key press equals equals true within draw um, will happen continually as long as a key is held down, whereas um, if um, it will happen just once if it's the key press method instead. Um, let's get rid of our text right here for now. We'll stick with our ellipse. So we've also seen using the key variable. So if I want to move this ellipse, if key equals equals a, well, say d for example, um, if I say n equals n plus one here, rid of this just for a second. Now, as long as this key variable is storing the character D, um, the uh, location of the ellipse will increase. So I've hit D, I haven't hit anything else, it'll keep going until I hit another key um, because key will have stored D. Um, which is useful, but if you want a little bit more control, um, if, in this case, I move the entire conditional statement inside this key press, now, if I press the D key, it's only going to take one step each time the key is pressed. If I had other keys, have to take my word that I am, if you, I hit other keys, it's not going to move forward, but if you hit the D key, um, it'll move just one time, so the key needs to be pressed and the key that you press needs to be D. So I've got a conditional now inside um, this um, inside this new method, this user input method, key pressed. Um, so um, go ahead and use comments to annotate what's happening here. You've got a key press method that happens once every time um, a key is pressed, and if that key happens to be D, um, it will move the ellipse. Um, so if I didn't have this conditional statement here, if I just had if n equals n plus 1, the ellipse would move any time I hit any key. Again, take my word, I'm hitting any key. Um, so this can give you some control. It's a good way if you want to have um, more control over the movement of objects using um, the keyboard um, rather than have them move continually, but just have them move maybe um, one pixel each time is a little bit, um, it's not too, uh, it's a kind of a tiny step. So maybe if I put five, now it can kind of, um, you know, move around the, sc the screen. Um, you could add to that, in fact, it, um, to make the um, ellipse move in all uh, four directions. Um, you need another variable for that. You don't have to do that unless you'd like to try it. Um, but if you have two variables and four conditionals inside, you can have um, a key controlled um, shape on screen.